Hello, uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to draw an accurate looking uh, 3D image of a Lego brick based on uh, the isometric technique. To do this you're going to need a sharp pencil, rubber, uh, ruler, protractor and also a handwriting pen uh, and maybe a sharpie. Pens of different thickness. Okay. First step you're going to do is uh, draw a horizontal line across the page. And now you can do this faintly. I'm going to do it a bit more heavily so you can see. Like so. After that, take a protractor and roughly in the center, you're going to mark out a 30 degree angle, one side and the other. And also make sure you mark where the center of that is. Now, what I've done is I've scaled this Lego brick up by a factor of four. So I've measured, uh, well, I've got the Lego measurements and I've just times it by four. So 7.8 millimeters times four is actually 31.2. So what you're gonna do is this length here is gonna be, get it lined up, and then you're gonna draw on 31 millimeters. Like so. Then you're gonna do the same in this direction. I need to turn my page, 31 millimeters. Okay, and that's the bottom of your Lego brick. Now the vertical height is 9.6 times by four, that's 38.4. So you're gonna go straight up 38 millimeters. Like so, and you're gonna do that the same here, 38 millimeters here, and then here. And then if you connect them up, those lengths should be 31. If I double check, yeah, it's about 31. Now, um, you've got like an open book looking image. What you need now is to draw the top. And again, these lengths are gonna be 31.4 millimeters. So we just, we'll do it 31. Now I could get my protractor out and measure another angle of 30 over here but I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna sort of freehand it. As long as the line I draw is parallel with this one, I'll be fine. So if I put my ruler sort of lined up there and then just slide it up and then measure 31. As long as that line is parallel with that one, it'll be fine. And that, again, this line here, slide it up, it should be this line should be parallel. All right, so that's the basis of my box. I now need to draw this top part. Um, now you'll notice anything round uh, appears like an oval when it's look, viewed at from a, three point, uh, a 3D perspective. So to find the center of the box, first of all, I'm gonna do some faint guidelines from point, point to point like that. And I just need the center. So again, from point to point, just a little cross there. That gives me the center of the top. Now I know that this round part has a diameter of 4.8 millimeters. 4.8 times by four is about 19, 20 millimeters. So to make it easy, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a dash here. And that distance there is 20 or 19 or 20 millimeters. All right, the height, you need to do is about six millimeters here. So a little six millimeter line either side. And then once you've got that, you're gonna to need to draw the round part. Now, um, as I said, it's gonna appear oval shaped. So roughly, I'm just gonna do mine freehand. I'm gonna do an oval that connects both of those lines. Then at the bottom, it's gonna follow that curve shape again. It's gonna look something like that. Okay. Right, that's all the pencil work for now. What you're gonna do is now go over it in a handwriting pen um, or any black pen you have. You can use a ruler if you like, uh, but be careful if you use a ruler, sometimes those pen lines will smudge. And the reason we do it in pencil first, obviously, is if we make mistakes, we can then erase, and it helps, obviously, if you do it faintly. Um, 
when you use a black pen, it's then going to stand out from the page a lot more. So go over all of the lines you want to keep on the page. Um, be careful with your oval. Go on smooth motion. And join it up. Right, once that's done, they're all a thin black line. And to make it really stand out from the page, you really want to go around the outside in a thick, thicker pen. So I've just got myself a Sharpie. I could continue just going over in thin pen and eventually it would look darker, but it's obviously easier with a thick pen. So go around the outside, keeping your hand as steady as possible. And then the final thing you're going to do is you could shade it or color it uh, and to make it really stand out. Before I shade or color, I'm just gonna erase those pen line, uh, pencil lines. You might wanna blow just to make sure the, the pen is all dry. Now, imagine if you've got light projecting on an object, particularly if it's a box shape object, um, the light is gonna mean that one side of the object will be light, the other side will be dark, and uh, another side will be a sort of in-between tone. So get yourself a coloring pencil. Uh, if I start on the light side first, um, try and do all of your pencil lines in the same direction, okay? nice and light. Then do your darker side. Um, don't, be, don't be afraid to uh, press quite heavily. That's fine. Again, try and keep them all in the same direction. There shouldn't be any white left on the page. Okay, now when you come to the curve, this is where um, you have to be creative a bit. So imagine light is hitting this side so that's light so on this side of the curve that's going to be light but around here it's going to be dark so what i would do is i would start your curve light okay you could even leave it completely white for a bit and then come back in and go darker and darker and darker and then around here it could be you could be really heavy okay and then finally on the top you can do like an in-between tone like so and you'll end up with a quite an impressive looking 3D object. Right, once that's done, you could add your measurements. As I said, the diameter of that is 4.8 millimeters. Uh, the height is 9.6, and the width here is 7.8. Um, you could even then push yourself and challenge yourself to really go for it and do, you know, like an all out standard size Lego brick. Good luck.